All right, episode 65, how to develop a Michael Jordan mindset in your real estate business. And we're gonna get started 15 minutes late right now. Okay. Welcome to the only real estate podcast worth listening to with your hosts, Nick Good, Matt Kelderman, and Brian Force. Combined, they have 26 years of experience and have sold over 1,500 homes. Join them each week as they bring you everything you need to know about real estate. And now, here are your hosts, Nick, Matt, and Brian. <sighs> That's what I'm starting with. I don't These know guys what, are getting their eardrums yeah, blown. So I don't right know right. what button you're hitting, Derek, but it ain't working. It's, it's not the, still so loud. It's like what you hear all the time, Brian. It's not the right button. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the thoughts inside your head. There you yes. go. The yes. voices are extra loud today. All right. Episode 65. Today, we're going to talk about how to develop a Michael Jordan-type mindset in your real estate business. But before we get started on that, if you haven't gone to iTunes, and if you've never been there, go to iTunes right now. Leave us a review on the only real estate podcast worth listening to, um, as well as go and request access to our Facebook group, the only real estate group worth being a part of. Um, and then last but not least, if you are struggling with taking listings or if you want to take more listings in your business, I know we signed our 14th or 15th listing today. You and I were talking on the phone last night. You guys are yes. killing it. Yep. Um, we are plus, we are over 34% increase in listings taken compared to last year. We're plus 23 now. Um, nice. I think it's like 75 or 76 listings we've taken year to date so far. That's awesome. So if you if you want to learn how to take more listings like, like, like the Good Home Team, the Her Group DFW, then go over to Tor Academy academy.com backslash take 10 t-e-n you'll sign up you'll be prompted to sign up for our take 10 plus listings webinar and then you'll be prompted to uh and requested and it's a mandatory requirement to sign up for tour academy mm -hmm. for one dollar still one dollar here or $197 for lifetime access because i still want to get rid of that one dollar offer <laughs> so all right, we're 15 minutes late, and uh, we were trying to get Derek to to go live today with the rocket launch. Yeah. No, is that happening right now? Well, like Derek, when it gets to, like, 3.30, can you just, like, hold up your phone towards the window, and then we'll wasn't, do... Wasn't that, like, 3.30 Eastern time? Yeah, I feel no, like... No, 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 no. We would have known if they were dead by now. That's, That's not what's happening. Wow. I'm, just, I'm kidding. <laughs> you I'm kidding. Know. It's going to be fine. I just want to <laughs> see it. I'm kidding. This is, there's no way it was that. It was 4.30 Eastern. It's going to yeah, happen It's 3.30 Central Time. So point your phone at us. Yeah. Or if someone else can go live, we'll just join their Facebook live stream. So yeah, if you we'll can bring do that, you in. tag us in it. We'll bring you in on this. But one thing I wanted to talk about, so, um, you know, with... If you haven't heard about it, The Last Dance on ESPN, it's the 10-part uh, documentary series on Michael Jordan, um, and, it, and it's going over his career. It's going on how he was as a player, whether it was loved or hated, um, and, and a lot of people love to hate him. Sure. Um, but as I'm watching that, I know you guys, for some reason, are only three to five episodes in. I don't know what you're doing with your time. Do, do, you, do you want to know why I'm only four episodes in because you changed your cable plan and now my ESPN <laughs> app on my Fire TV stopped working. Uh, so now I have to pirate all the episodes. So um, if the FCC is hearing this, yikes, sorry. Sounds like you need to reach out to the person that has the cable plan. But I'm, just, I'm not moving Heather. through it as quickly. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to need you to resend me that password. Yeah, Heather, please. resend that password, please, or just drop it in the comment down below. Let <laughs> yeah. everyone have it. Um, Don't do but, that. But one thing that I really, like, first of all, when I watch, like, documentaries on people, are you the type that then goes and researches the shit out of them? Oh, afterwards? I'm such a rabbit hole, dude, and I know that Kelderman probably is, too. If you give me, like, one obscure thing that I don't know about on a documentary, I have to know everything out yes. of curiosity. So yes. 100%. So I'm, I'm very much the same way. And so, but on this one, I'm like, all right, this guy, how, do, how can you have, you know, he played 15 seasons. And, and, of course, in the middle of that, he then retired and played baseball because his father was murdered. So sure. So wanting to take a break for, for a grievance. But I'm like, how can you have, like, how can you relate that into your, your business? If you're an entrepreneur, real estate, et cetera, how can you, you know, how can you say, all right, I, I want to be the Michael Jordan of real estate? I mean, obviously it's like a super, like, we're going to talk about this for the next hour or whatever, because it's a really broad question with a lot of like layers. But I, I think in general, 
what we're talking about is how do you up your mindset to be as competitive, relentless, and driven, motivated, all those types of things. I'm a fundamental believer that motivation and drive are created, not inherent, right? Like, and I think that's true for, for anyone. You could be the least ambitious person on earth, but you've really, if you really get into something that interests you or that you're passionate about, your motivation and drive changes completely, right? For a lot of us, that's, we, we get really passionate and motivated about less, less impactful things in our lives, you know, like me playing Call of Duty for the entire lockdown. Like, if y'all haven't jumped on with me, I'm in unreal passionate. I do not like to lose in that thing, right? But some people can really direct those, those feelings and emotions and that mindset towards super productive, highly, you know, profitable activities like becoming an NBA player. And I think the real question is how do you bring that drive, that motivation, that passion, that relentless attitude towards your real estate business. I think it comes down in one way, shape, or form, all roads lead back to believing what is possible. Truly believing um, that you can accomplish anything in this business. And, and, and Kelderman probably has a ton to say on this because he said one of the most impactful things to me, I think, over the years that I, I've heard is that a lot of times when we start to get a little bit of success, especially in this business, we tend to sabotage ourselves. That's why a lot of people ride the real estate roller coaster. They stop working when good things happen to them. And that's because fundamentally, I think for a lot of people, we don't feel like we deserve a certain level of success. Well, and I think for me, the the deal with Michael Jordan's always been just his outlook on failure, right? Like, and I think that's probably what my biggest takeaway, even not getting very far into it, just obviously knowing what I know about him is, and and it's something that I've always struggled with. And I've been, as Brian and I as business partners, he's been able to have some pretty candid conversations around it. I don't, failure doesn't motivate me the way it motivates guys like Michael Jordan, right? Like failure is one of those things that for me, kind of makes me want to retreat a little bit. And I think part of that Michael Jordan mindset is those dudes run towards failure because they can't believe that they would lose at anything. Well, Kobe yeah. had the same thing, right? Yeah, so it's funny. And so first off, I'm surprised that, you know, what's that you always see on Instagram? At least I have all the ads, Iconic or whatever. Yeah. It's, it oh, has yeah, all with the, the K, yeah. The, uh, it has all the motivational yeah. quotes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I'm like, first like off. Like over lions and shit? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, where's the one with Jordan in the background with a cigar or whatever or, or on the court? Because right. first of all, he, some of the quotes that he has, I mean, I'm surprised you just don't see it out there. So you talked about failure. One of the quotes he has is, failure isn't just accepted, it's expected. When you stretch yourself past your current limits, failure is inevitable. It's, it spawns growth, yep. right? And, and you can only reach the top and stay at the top by continually improving. Winning isn't everything growing is. And so they, they talked about, you know, one, first off, his, his mindset was he was he was cut or not cut. He didn't make the varsity basketball team in high school, right? right? right. Um, and, and then I, I you know, because I went down this path of like, you know, obsessing for 24 hours. I'm like, I'm going to consume everything. So I listened to a podcast that uh, that this lady had at Kate something, Kate Reality or some bullshit. But name is Kate Reality. Something. It's awesome. Yeah, but she had on the 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 author who wrote the 700 page autobiography or the biography oh, of wow. Jordan, and he talked about you know Jordan's mindset was about proving his dad wrong, right? So really? if you you know for for his success it was it and. Jordan had an older brother named Larry. Larry was actually a better athlete, bigger, stronger. And when they were playing basketball with his dad at a younger age, um, they told uh, uh, Jordan's dad told uh, Jordan, or yeah, Jordan's dad told Jordan to go in the house and and do the dishes with all, with all the or go and do you know hang out with all the women, right? Right. <laughs> and so that kind of they said that kind of fueled him, but but his mindset was was just. You know, Jordan has the growth mindset. It's it's what many successful people have, and and the growth mindset is genetics may determine your starting line, but hard work determines the finish line. Sure. And so in this business, it's it's you know, we don't want to practice. We, you know, we all say, oh, you know, you go to those, you know, whether on our teams or not. Oh, we're going to script and role play. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh shit, I don't want to do that, <laughs> right? But but as as it's not fun, right? It's as weird as that is. I'm trying to think of something better. I'm trying to put myself in those shoes of like, well, I remember when they were like, all right, we're going to role play. And I'm like, and I'm like, all right, can I get up and act like I need to take a call or go to the bathroom? Right. right? Well, it's just because you're scared to look silly, right? Of and I think that's the other thing too, is, and I would imagine if, if we could talk to a lot of these high achievers and they never had that fear 
of looking stupid, right? They were they they were more motivated by failure made them look stupid. They didn't care yep. what it took to get there. And we're just so worried about the words we say or, or those types of things, especially in our industry. Yeah. That's why so many agents all of a sudden, you know, you see it in bold or whatever, right? They're like, we're going to take our 20 minutes call. Everybody's like, yeah, okay. And they go yeah. outside and they're like sitting just in the car and not doing shit. Taking a knee, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Texting. And, and I've always wondered that is like, all right, what, what, why is it that someone can come into this business in year one and dominate when, when you've got, you know, people in the business 10 to 15 years and they're struggling to, to put up, you know, put up one to five deals. And it's because, because they, in my opinion, a lot of people that, that have that success or come in and start experiencing success, right, is that they are going to model what other people do. Yeah. They also become coachable. Right. And, and, you know, whether whether you're going to tour academy and signing up for that and, and going through the classes and then actually implementing it. Yeah. Yep. Right. I mean, a lot of that stuff in tour academy that that we're that we teach in there is what works in our business today. Yep. And, and, you know, it's you know, you know, you would think that people should be lining up to sign up for for twenty seven dollars a month or one hundred ninety seven dollar lifetime access. But but for whatever reason. They hold off because they, whether they're skeptical or whatever that may be, they're self-sabotaging. Yep. They're not wanting to go down and do that extra learning process, that practice mode process. They just want to get in the game. I think for some people, too, they haven't reached that point where they've maxed out. They, they don't believe they've maxed out their action versus time, right? Like the reason I I give a shit about mindset now or is had you talked to me two years ago, I would have still thought that it was a physical work issue is because I now know that there's no more physical work for me to put in. You know, there's mindset stuff around efficiency and things like that, but there's just no more time in a day for me. And I really believe that there's there's no difference. Warren Buffett, all those other guys, they the whole thing of them only having the same 24 hours, they are just in their groove the whole time. And the majority of us can never find it. And we don't believe it's for us either. So you talk about the fear of not signing up for stuff. I just think a lot of people just don't believe a certain level of success is for them, no matter what they say out of their mouth. Right? Yeah, yeah, but again, it's you can you know what Jordan's mindset was is you can only reach the top and stay at the top by constantly improving yourself. Winning isn't everything; the growing part is. And so, you know, it's it's kind of like us. Like you know, you guys have pinned. I mean, it's mm -hmm. amazing. 27, 26 deals this month, right? That's I think we're, we're at twenty four yesterday. I don't know what yeah, came in. I think in. we're at twenty five. Doesn't yeah, matter. Twenty five deals, it, it, and enough. but it's not enough. Not yeah. enough. Right. Yeah, not enough, Brian. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. You just defeated what I was going to say. Well, no, but I don't, I don't it's think enough it, for Brian, not enough. No. I will say I know for a fact it's not enough for Brian. Enough like, <laughs> that I haven't broken anything in the office right. this month. Right, right. but but it, it comes down to okay, you're you're still wanting to tweak, you're wanting to improve, right? And and you know you you reach that pinnacle top, and and you know it, it's it's it feels good, but then guess what? You got to go back to work. Right? You got to go back to work, and well, and and. All, a lot of these different these, these sort of different components collide and and I think sort of where my perspective is, is that a lot of people struggle with the things like the failure and the invitation of failure either because they understand that growing and succeeding or success is only going to happen through them getting out of their comfort zone continuing to grow like you just said and we sort of live in a society I won't even say sort of we do live in a society that systematically sort of discourages that mindset. And that's why a lot of people, especially those from corporate America and things like that, that make the transition to entrepreneurship in one way or another, they struggle mightily out of the gate, especially because like, dude, you know, some of us were bartenders, D Nick delivered pizzas, like we never worked in corporate America. So maybe that was what made it a little bit easier, but kind of since kindergarten, all through the end of college, it is, a, B, C, or D, and you fail if you get a, below a certain thing, and failure is bad, and you're not supposed to fail, and you get in trouble, and you get kicked out if you fail too much, right? And then you get into corporate America, and there's really not so much of a thing as failure. There's just kind of either you pedal along right at your entry-level position, and then hopefully you do enough over time, or you're there long enough, you get promoted, then you do it again, and again. Like, there's no, like... There's no, there's no growth through failure there. There's really just time on task, and that's how you carve out your career. So this concept that you come into this totally new sort of business, and the only way to get better at it is to really fucking suck in the beginning. All right, all right, listen to this then. Oh. I've missed. I oh, my God, Derek, I'm so sorry. So sorry to interrupt. Can Bring we do it? it? Rocket update yeah. news. Rocket update news. Postponed. What? <laughs> Whole they, thing's postponed. No, they knew about the show. What a bunch they said, of they said it's Wednesday. The boys are wrong. There's, there's, there's tornadoes in the air. Yeah, friend, friends of <laughs> no, 
friends of the show. <laughs> friend of the friends show. Friends of the show. We yeah. They said they defer to us today, <laughs> so yeah. stick around. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's it's but, postponed till a different day completely. Is what you're saying? Yeah. It's it's not happening today. All right. Well, we'll keep you updated uh, on the latest from Houston. So that to go back to to you were talking about you know the failure and stuff like that right so jordan one of jordan's quotes is i've missed more than 9000 shots in my career I i've lost i've lost almost 300 games mm-hmm. 26 times i've been trusted to to take the game winning shot and missed yep i failed over and over and over again in my life and that is why i succeed yep right and so i i did my team meeting on tuesday on this and and one of the things i think about is is if i'm going on a listing presentation today more often than not, I'm getting it. The reason I'm getting them today at a high, high, high clip is because I can't tell you how many times I drove out to Burleson sure. or Fort Worth yeah. and and drove, you know, basically three hours round trip yeah. and to have a conversation. To have a conversation, and I'm like, shit, this person's not signing. You're just like, why did I come here? Yes, right. <laughs> and then and then it was constantly like, all right, what could I have done better, right? So one of the one of in in our and our missions, visions, values, and belief statements at the Good Home Team is, is you know, our 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 mission or, or our belief is that we we hate to lose more than we like to win. Sure. Right. And that is we're gonna over we're gonna analyze the losses. We're gonna stay on top of our losses and figure out what could I've done to then next time not lose. Right. Same thing that Jordan did. You know, when when there there is in one of the episodes. I don't know if you've seen this one yet, but. Um, there was a he was it was back when the NBA played games like they would play a home game and then immediately fly. Yeah, the next away, day. like the home and home would be like back to back. Yeah, they play yeah. home and then they play the same team at their home, yeah. right? Back to back, and and somebody lit Jordan up, and and you know at the end of the game, um, it was said that the guy walked by and was like, "Yeah, great game, Jordan," and and um, and Jordan lit it up the next night, right? Well, it turns out that conversation and that that passing of words never happened. Mm-hmm. Jordan put it in his mind and made it, it was it was made up so that he had a vendetta to prove and he's like, you know what, F this, uh, you know, and, and he did that often. You know, when, when he came back after he retired the first time, he came back from, from playing baseball, um, he came back as number 45, I think it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yep. Um, and then he had a shitty, shitty game. Like, he had a shitty game, and then the next night or the next game, he, he unretired 23 and yep. lit it up, yep. right? And, and it, was, it was just bringing that back. Yep. And so it's, it's what, what, what's called that mental toughness. It's the idea of being able to push past failures by remaining positive and competitive, and it also involves training, preparing oneself to be mentally ready for whatever challenges come our way. So and we must continue to persevere throughout the adversities with which we are faced. Yep. Like, I mean, first of all, his dad was murdered, right? And, and That's a crazy part of the story that nobody talks about. We, like, not to, dude, like, I mean, even I remember. The most famous basketball player on the planet's father was murdered, and I think it, was, they didn't, it wasn't like an immediately clear. There was some stuff that no, went on. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you guys are like a couple years older than I am, but I sort of remember living it. And even back then, it was not made as big a deal as it probably would be today. Yeah. Well, not yeah, but uh, the social media wasn't around. That's true. Yeah. But the amount of stuff you have to push through, I think to to the mindset part of it, and I'll be honest with you, you, you guys have that. I've said this before on other stuff, and I'll say it again. It's interesting because you were talking about the motto of your team that, like, we like to, we hate to lose, or we, yeah, whatever. We hate to lose more than we yeah. like to win. Like, it's interesting because I'm just, I'm not afraid to admit that I don't have that <laughs> in me. Like, and it's not a draw, it's not a lack of wanting to have success. Sure. It's just, there's also a part of me, it's like, hey, I'm just kind of really excited to be in the room with all these motherfuckers. This is sweet, <laughs> right? And, and not, not to be like a lost little puppy who's just excited, right? I'm not an idiot, yep. but I'm also, there's a level of stress that comes with like coming in at the last, we've had this happen, right? The last minute somebody beats us by upending. Man. I, and, and look, it makes this dude's head want to explode. There's plenty of stuff in my life where I get upset like that, but when it comes to that kind of stuff, I'm like, damn, bro, we're second. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked about that too, right? So I think some of it is there is a little bit of this that life either teaches you or, or it comes to you through some other circumstance that drive to be number one. It is yep. there is a talent to it, or there's there's a, a a circumstantial thing to it. I think that not everybody experiences. Not everybody experiences it, and, and it comes down to 
we all live in our version of reality, right? And whatever narrative we tell ourselves is what we think is going to be true. And, and going back to that quote, or that quote, that, that situation you just talked about before, where, where Jordan sort of invented this narrative that somebody had kind of said something passive aggressively to him after a game, which didn't even happen. Um, it's similar to a lot of what a lot of successful people do. I was reading uh, Mark Banson's book, Everything is Fucked, or something like that, his latest one yesterday. It talks about Jocko Willink. Uh, if you don't know who Jocko Willink is, uh, former Navy SEAL, scariest person you've ever seen in your life. But he still gets to like 4 o'clock in the morning every single day or something like that. And he'll talk about on his podcast and his books and stuff, like he has this, he has this narrative that he tells himself that there's somebody out there that still wants to kill him. That there's an enemy out there, the more, the more upset they are or whatever, and that they are going to murder him one day. And whether or not that's even true, like certainly when he was overseas, that was very true, right? Like yep. he figured if he got up earlier than everybody else and got a jump on things, he'd always have an advantage over his enemy, right? That probably stopped being true when he returned to civilian life, but that narrative still resonates with him, right? The same way that Jordan can invent this mindset that somebody talks shit to him after a game and wants to go destroy this person the next night. And then we all have our narratives that we live through, which is it's fine to be like this or it's not fine to be like this or this is our reality or this is not. And those things take a lot of time, but then going back to you're not going to grow unless you get uncomfortable, you can start to develop those narratives. And whether it happens organically or otherwise, and you know, I know... You just said, like, when, when we get second place to anybody, I lose my mind. But that, honestly, if I look at it objectively, bro, I am thrilled and blessed to be a part of an organization that has already sold 25 houses this month. Like, if you told me that four years ago, I would have, like, never believed you. But yeah. now we're at that point. The narrative had changed. The narrative, now I want 40. Now I want 50, well, Because right? you're, that's you're, the that constant strive for growth, sure. right? And, and, and I need people like that around me, right? Like, I recognize the fact in me that there there's, there's a, like, and I've surrounded myself with Becca and Adam and Brian and people yeah. in my life who do have that mentality because I do need to be drug along because sometimes the okay with being in second place where it fucks you mindset-wise is everything Every once in a while, you'll come in sixth place or yeah. 13th yeah. place. But, but then and you, you're kind of like, eh, it's okay yeah, this okay. month, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun. not. Yeah. Yeah. That's not okay. So I will say that here's the thing. I, I would I would go back because I'm, I'm going to rewatch it. And, and there is so much in terms of leadership in here, in sure. terms of also understanding that. Um, and, and I wanted to, to, and I didn't have time to do it, but I, I wanted to do like a, a would you rather be somebody, right? Like I want to break down Scottie Pippen's numbers sure. yeah. versus Carl Malone. Like Carl Malone from the Utah Jazz yeah. never won a champion. You know, I don't know if he's a Hall of Famer or not. Yeah, but here, okay, so here's a really interesting side topic, and I think this is this goes to talking about how great Jordan was and why this conversation matters. And I will admit that I'm swiping this straight from the ticket from a conversation sure. I had the other day, like I do a lot of my sports content. But All here's of the mine. But here's the thing is the reason that what Michael Jordan did is more impressive than what Kobe did and what LeBron did is because there are a list of Hall of Famers who do not have a ring. Because Michael Jordan kept them from getting That's a ring. True. LeBron hasn't kept anybody from getting a ring. Every yep. damn person on LeBron's watch has gotten a ring. Yep. Right? Yep. Jordan kept Hall of Famers Hardly from getting a ring Malone. and made Scottie Pippen, who is probably, if we're being honest, a top 25 player yeah. in league history. Sure. And he, he made him everybody think that he's a chump if you don't really understand basketball. So yeah. with that, they talk about in there, and, and it was actually Steve Kerr that brought it up, um, who is now a uh, coach or GM yeah. of, Golden State. Coach coach. of Golden State. Yeah. yeah, Golden State Warriors. But he talked about, look, you understood when you played on that Bulls team that you were a role, a role player. Right. Right? And, and there is, when you're on real estate and you're either team, you, when you're the team leader or you're on a team and you're listening to this, it's okay. There's the, we can't all be Michael Jordans, right? That, that is also a mindset. We, all, we can have Jordan-like mentalities. Yeah. I can guarantee you that, that Pippen, uh, Horace Grant, uh, Bill Cartwright, some of the other guys on that have that killer instinct. It's, it's instinct is just not as as ferocious yep. as as Jordan was. And so there there is a there is an understanding or or ways that we can be become better at at showing people like it's okay to be a role player. Like I would much look, I'd much been rather been a role player and win those champions Six and, and be aligned sure. with that than yep. maybe Carl Malone. Um, especially I wouldn't be able to be called Malone because I heard some things like he knocked up somebody. At the age of 18, he impregnated a 12-year-old. 
and what? and did not get charged. What sort of weird Michael Jordan rabbit hole did yeah, you go I was down? Yeah, say that's not in the documentary. <laughs> the, the thing I know about Carl Malone is that I used to think it was cool because my dad was a truck driver. That was Carl Malone used to be a truck driver, and I thought that was cool. <laughs> go, I'm going to tell you, go and look that. Like I did research on that one too yeah. because his son came out and was like, he's not a bad guy. He just made a mistake. I'm like. That's not a mistake. Yeah, it's not like they, that one. they talked about that on the ticket, by the way. So friends over the ticket. So, yep. um, um, but I mean, again, that mindset comes down to to um, you know they they created routines. Like sure. Jordan had, he became first the best practicer, right? And and he created what was called at the time the Breakfast Club, and the Breakfast Club was Scottie Pippen, some of the other like some of the other kind of key role players there would meet at his house every day. And, and usually it's in the morning, but if they were traveling late, they adjust the schedule. Sure. And they had Jordan's trainer there. And, and back then, they did not have the trainers in the way that things are set up today. Like the, the, it, this was, you know, this, the trainer that Jordan had is, is still with the Bulls, but has his own company. It's not. Yeah, it's uh, something like I bought his book. Relentless? Yes. Oh, oh, I can't remember that guy's name. I want him on the show. I like to have him on the show. I mean, I, here's the thing: is Tim I, I something. Yeah. Um, regardless, Tim of, Grover. Tim Grover. Yeah. Yes. And so Tim Grover would be there, and and it was less about practice. They did a little practicing. It was more about stretching. It was more about eating right and getting your head your head right. Sure. Right. And and it was getting who he trusted those those core group of guys who he trusted in there and and building that. But it was becoming better at practicing. Sure. Right. Then then in the games, you know, they played practice like it was like Jordan. He hit Steve Kerr. He punched him in the face. Yeah. Right. His practices were how he played the game. Yep. It's the same way when we role play. Like if if we're doing if we're doing scripting right now, and you're like, "Hey, Brian, it's Nick." Like I'm not like no. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna act Start like it's over. real. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's the same way. And so they created these routines. And so like a lot of his routines, this was this was kind of someone that it was analyzing. But he says. You know, they created routines utilizing visualization techniques as well as practicing self-talk, yep. Yep. right? And so his routines, routines are, you know, this is what helps us trust the process and not focus on the outcome, yep. right? Because how many times, especially in our business, you know, with our routines, we're going to start something. Yep. And and we're going to like, oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it expires today. Mm -hmm. I've yep. never done it. Here's some scripts. Yeah. Haven't practiced them, but I'm going to jump on the phones and um, I made a couple of calls and I didn't get any appointments. This doesn't work. Right. Right. Or this lead generation strategy doesn't work. This one doesn't work. And so your routines is is helping you stay focused and trusting the process and not focused on the outcome. Well, and that's and this is worth noting because we we, I, we have this conversation a lot where we compare sports to, to entrepreneurship or business in general. And the one thing that sort of is always I wanted to kind of stop down and talk about whenever we do this is that understand that the difference between sports and let's just say real estate, for example, is that everything in real estate is practice, right? Like when the Bulls go out and practice, they're still playing basketball, right? Like when we're talking about just script practice and just that type of stuff, like that would be akin to like them just stretching all practice, mm -hmm. right? Like that's what you're doing when you're script practicing, you're stretching, you're stretching out your, your conversational muscles, your your objection handler muscles, like whatever that is, right? You go on appointments, if you don't get them, great, that was practice, right? Like, I, I think that's one of the things that, that from a mindset standpoint that really, really gets people down a, a bad path is they take the hits so hard because they think that everything is game seven of the NBA finals, every appointment. And then when they don't get it, yes. they really take that rejection hard. That's practice too. It's just getting your reps in, you know? Well, and there's a cadence to how much you get better, right? Just to take yes. that, for instance, right? You First, you get better on the phone. Then people actually start in, inviting you to come on appointments. Right. Then you fail those. Then you actually start signing listings. Then yes. guess what? Some of them fall apart because you don't know how to manage them properly. You, you know? overpriced them, Yeah, whatever. there's just all these steps to even getting to a point where you sell one. You have to overcome all these little different hurdles. I love what Nick said too, that, and I was going to ask that earlier, and I'm glad he brought it up. There's, there's two parts. One thing that I wholeheartedly believe in that I used to be such a skeptic on, and I don't know why I was because it seems so f obvious, <laughs> but like the negative self-talk thing, right? It's Just the, 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 the telling yourself stuff in your head or, or writing down things that are about yourself that are not negative or telling other people when they ask you how it's going. It's like, eh. There's a difference between being vulnerable and being a victim, and yep. I think it's really important for people to understand that. And the, the negative self-speak part is probably going to – the first thing that most people need to start mastering. Yeah. The, visual, the visualization thing, I have always struggled. And I think it's because I'm such a flighty individual by nature. Yeah. 
and and you know we're now all talking about all getting together to sit down to carve out a path for something that we all want to do because we all need the vision on it and i've always been very poor yeah. at like casting a vision okay. of things right i'm like i'm just gonna hack my way through the weeds and every once in a while there's gonna be a clearing and then i'm just gonna run into more shit again so I never really have that clear path, and that's something that I need to work on. So, so I want to go into visualization and self-talk, but um, Amanda Simcoe, she made a comment that, and I don't have it in my notes, and I meant to because uh, Elizabeth Austin brought this up on our team yep. meeting. So this I is, love Amanda, that. this is in episode 10, by the way, the last part. So this is, she, Amanda mentions the thing that, that, that he said, she's talking in reference to Jordan, yep. that resonated most with, with Amanda was, uh, why would I worry about missing a shot I haven't taken yet? It's, I mean, that's it's, right. It's that's, perfect if and, you apply it to everything. And, yep. and, and if we were recording this and not doing a live podcast, I would probably use this line as the opener. Mm -hmm. I'd probably, I would probably, I would definitely use this line as the opener because, yep. because how many times have we said something and then we started immediately discrediting it yep. and saying, well, this it's not going to work because of this or or uh, I can't do that because of X Y. You're, are, you're, we sure. set up escape plans for ourselves for our failure, dude. Oh, all we, the we time. Set up, yes. We set up escape plans all over the place, and honestly, all we're doing is bear trapping ourselves, right? If if we if we would close those doors and move towards a more like positive thought process around it yep. and, and, and have the confidence that part of it is not that I'm not, a, it's not that I'm not afraid of failing or you guys aren't afraid of failing or Jordan's not afraid of failing. I'm positive I'm going to land on my feet now. And, sure. And he was, he, it's not that he's not afraid of failing. He understands failure it's helps just a part him of grow. It. It's yes. a part of it because he's, he sees the bigger picture yeah. and he understands that this is where he's going to improve his game in order to get to the next point, right? You know, um, I think it was in season two, season two or season three, he, he was getting beat up by the Detroit Pistons. I mean, yeah. that was mm -hmm. the, that was Dennis Rodman. That was Those guys Isaiah just Ryder. Everybody. Yeah. They, and they, they, mm -hmm. there's the one who created the Jordan rules, right? They beat him up. You know, they basically said, do not let him get in towards the basket. Do not let him take flight. Yep. You let him take flight. It's done, it's over, yeah. right? So they just beat him up. Yep. And so then he hired a trainer. He got a coach. You know, he, he went outside of, of, of what, what was already there and, and put on a little bit of some, some meat and some muscles. Yep. Um, but, you know, we, we go back to the routines, visualization, as well as the self-talk. So, so in, in visualization, this is, the, is, is vital in sustaining and, and improving mental toughness, right? That's the biggest thing. It's more about mental toughness. It's that grit that continues pushing forward. It's sure. That, that cliche quote of everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face, <laughs> in the face. right? Um, and, and visualization should be detailed and outline exactly what you want to achieve, keeping in mind room for error and changes in plans, right? Because how many times is someone like, oh, here's my plan, and like, well, what happens to this? Nope. This is the all the time in real estate. I mean, we deal with it on a train. I mean, I've got so many fires that you put yeah, out on a daily basis right, anyways. Yeah, well, we do. Stuff that comes out of nowhere, agents who are unresponsive. All of those things are emotional triggers, yeah. right? To where you, you on your side, like you said, they get, and I, I actually love that quote. You say it's cliche. I think it's amazing. If you yeah. don't understand the visual of like, and maybe, maybe it's more testosterone fueled things sure. I don't want to assume, but like as a guy, you have, you've put yourself in a situation where you are sure you were going to kick some serious ass. <laughs> And then you get popped. And you're not 100% sure it's going to go that way. All of a sudden, right? everything changes. <laughs> well, when you I know? think of that, I always think of, of Forrest, you know, when, when he was, he's a box, you know, was a boxer. Is it always a, once a boxer, always a boxer? Uh, no, not at all. You can 100% you can, you can get really bad at boxing after that, a while if you, you don't have train. Have you seen Mike Tyson? Oh, that dude, he's still, don't, don't sleep on Mike Tyson. For all of his personal stuff, I'm not saying I love or hate him, that dude has secretly been training for the last well, 20 he's years. He's coming back. Oh, uh, yeah, and so, so is apparently Holyfield. And they're you doing, could charge me $150, and I'm they're paying doing, it. They're doing one fight. Absolutely. I'm paying I'd it. pay $1,000. They're, they're doing one fight. But so let's go to, the, so let's go to again, so it, you know, having room for error and changes in plan. Like, maybe it's because we've been in this business for so long sure. that, that that's natural, but... You know, if, if you're newer in the business or if you still haven't had the success that you're wanting, but you think you have that plan in place, just just outline, you know, wh where's the parachutes? Yeah. Right. Where can you where can you quickly divert so that you can still stay on track? Uh, and I might be putting you on the spot too much here, but what, what, what was the general you've talked before about you're in Austin's Disney plan, right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever. Like mm -hmm. what was the when you sat down to have that conversation, it has to start somewhere. Right. Do you remember? what the just what you were trying to accomplish what question you were trying to answer for yourselves so our our disney vision well or, i mean yeah, I can't remember so our going. disney vision was they're gonna go to disney world that was the plan together yeah, yeah. Exactly. it's like we needed money for and if you've seen ticket. both of them they're just gonna ride the same on the same cart on every ride together <laughs> they're like we need this <laughs> so i mean look ours was 
I mean, it's it's kind of it's definitely ego based. It was a little bit of a. There's nothing uh, wrong with that. It was definitely more about domination and, and and making as much money as we can, but but doing it in our strategy. So our strategies was I wanted to own everything. Yeah. You know anything that we got our hands on, I wanted to own the company. It was, his was more about the the then developing the the cash flow that was sure. coming in and and you know making it somewhat simplistic and then um, so that I mean our Disney our Disney vision was you know the good home team and then it went into the investment portfolios and then it went into you know mortgage insurance and and property management and stuff like mm-hmm. that perfect I'm glad that you actually answered it that way because I think what that shows is it, it wasn't the topic of conversation look how deep you guys went and how each of these things were going to be interconnected knowing. Yeah. The day one, you were going to have all that shit. There's no way, right? But you stuck with a plan, and it just gradually got broader and broader and bigger, and the but, base got wider. And I will say that, again, our room for – or changes in plan and room for errors, like, we didn't – we – I will say this, so it's kind of it, – we didn't go and start a property management company, but we just started a property management company because we had to. We right. were forced into that. So we do now have a property management company, but that was that was in our plans yeah. as a Disney vision. But then we realized, no, we didn't want to. But now it's now because I guess maybe we put it out there. Right. It's it's there. So our there's changes in those plans of being like, all right, we got we went we we've achieved this level of success. We've yep. seen it. But we've diverted into saying, all right, you know, we no longer really flip as much as we used to. We're now into a develop, we're de- you know, a, a four multifamily for rent development community builder sure. type, right? And so that's where the changes in plans. Yep. Now, we didn't really plan for errors. I'm going to tell you that. Maybe <laughs> that was our. We were young and we're naive and yeah. and, and and all you your know, ideas were going to work. Yeah, everything's going <laughs> everything's going to make a million dollars. Hey, and guess then, what? It's not going to work that way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and look, we've lost some money on some deals, and so that's sure. you know, and, and we've been we've been punched in the face. Yeah. But that, I think that's the mental toughness is still moving forward. A hundred percent. You know, and we trusted. You know, we trusted in the process. So let's go back to the routines. Routines is we trust the process, not the focus on the outcome, because yep. we knew the process that we were doing is going to get us yes. eventually the outcome that we wanted, yeah. right? So we knew that the plan that we were on, you know, that we had in place is the right one. Um, and then let's do self-talk. So, you know, self-talk is is reframing critiques. People, you know, by reframing critiques, people can enhance their performance with motivational self-talk. Yep. So it's developing personal affirmations, which I've never been an affirmations guy, but, but there's it's more, I think, of a confidence level that maybe that is still affirmations, Well, right? here's the thing. Like, the, I've never been a big, big affirmations guy either, right? But, but Kelderman put it perfectly just a few minutes ago when we talked about negative self-talk. They've, they've, there's one thing that you take away from this podcast episode that, that has been transcendent, at least on my personal growth journey. All the, just, all the books that you read that you, you don't think about in the moment, you know, that, that have great advice, but you, you never really kind of, they never take because you're never thinking about it right at the right time. The negative self thing is the one thing that's really stuck for me. I, to this day, and I would challenge anybody who sees me on the street, ask me how my day is. You will never get anything but a solid, like, quality answer because that's like I just – I have worked really hard to never have that negative self-talk, and I swear if it is transcendent, and it takes a while, and it's something that, that is weird, and it is hard, it's a growth thing, and you feel uncomfortable saying things are okay when they're not, or they're great when they're bad, but man, getting rid of problems and replacing them with the word opportunity, getting rid of, of oh, I'm just hanging in there, that's, no, you're fucking not, you're having a great day, you're alive, and if you're watching here in, in like, you know, you might be young and, and like have a million awesome things going on for you, you know, like the, the, that was huge for me, for sure. Well, and, and he talks about he's like one of the one of the things and, and I could almost just read all the quotes like yeah. and, and just keep going on it because it's, it's to me that was inspiring is I cannot I, I can accept failure. Everyone fails at something, yeah. but I I can't accept not trying. Sure. Right. Again, that just goes back into what our business is it's yeah. like. It's like, you know, you talk to people who, who, I mean, we all know these people that we're talking to and they're like, man, like, you know, they, they, they know the business. Yep. Then why aren't they doing it? I, I just haven't, I, well, I don't have the cash. I don't have this. I'm like, well, don't learn how that. to implement things. Like, like, There's a mindset aspect to that too, though. That's all it is. Adam, Adam Hergenrother, who another person we need to have on the show, we get so obsessed with having people in here that we kind of, we kind of pigeonhole ourselves yeah, for, for other sure. people. And he would do that in a second, I think. But he, he talks about how he got into real estate. Now, I think he had a buyer's agent in his first six months really? and like two assistants. He just didn't know he wasn't supposed to close eight deals a month, sure, right? Yeah. Like, or whatever it ended up being in that first year. So I do think there are some people who come into it with the mindset of, 
of just, we're just going to crush this yep. and because that's what they told me to do, and I thought that's just the way you're supposed to do it. Yep. And so many people come into this industry from, from another place where they're probably they're used to being told what to do, and you go all the way back to that processes and routines. We're not built yep. to figure those out on our own. It's why you guys have both been in, in leadership and essentially coaching at one point, and, and very candidly, it made both of you just want to freaking jump off a building, right? Yeah, like, 100%. You both hated it. The reality is... The reason it's because you guys have those routines and processes down and the, the average agent is just not asking a high enough level question. They just want to know what to do in the scenario. Yeah. What we all understand is that there's some scenarios where I don't know what to do, but I've yeah. been through this enough. I have a routine for how I got these clients. I've had a, a long conversation with them so I know where everything needs to go. Now, the, the I can't untangle the wires for you. And a sure. lot of real estate agents get stuck at that point because they don't realize that they don't even know what they don't know. Yeah, and then I would say that just the time, on the repetition, the going through it, the failing forward, that all becomes part of it, right? So like the negative self-talk, if we're talking about actional stuff, the negative self-talk is huge to me. The other thing that you guys are both touching on right now is just the routines, doing the work. And the reason I say that is because like big visions are great, okay? But challenge yourself to do this, right? If you ask anybody out the street what their grand vision for their life is, it's pretty easy for them to come up with that, right? Like, I want a house here, and I want a private island, and I want all these different things, right? They can lay out their Disney plan, and, and like hypothetically, most people relatively easily for you as far as like what they want their life to look like, right? But then you ask somebody what they think their individual day needs to look like on a day in and day out basis to actually hit that plan, people are usually at a loss for it, or they're gonna name off a whole bunch of shit they don't really wanna do, right? And so what happens is when you combine that with, wow, this is growth, this is really uncomfortable, I don't like this, I have some negative self-talk, I, I don't like to fail forward, all that type of stuff. That grand vision, when you break it down to just the day in and day out of all uh, uh, what you have to do to accomplish things, that's where most people come up short. They just, they, they do, it's really, really, really hard to lose sight of that grand vision when your day just freaking sucks. And so like, as far as actual advice, what I would say is that like, if you look at people, and I've learned this about other people in my life along the way that have really given me hope, surrounding yourself with people more successful than you is so, so, so important. Not because, not just because of the things that you'll learn, not just because of the company that you'll keep, but because you'll start to realize that everyone around you that's more successful than you is still just a human being with all the same flaws, a lot of the same emotions, all the same struggles. They've just gotten used to doing the routine and doing the work, even though it's uncomfortable, that's helping them foresee their grand vision. And this is not in any way to say that like, we're at that level, but I know that we're probably at a place where we're, we've seen a little bit more success than some of our listeners. Like, I'll just tell you right now, dude, like, we are goofballs. Like we wake, I wake up every day almost uncomfortable at the level of success that our business has seen in the last, and since we've been in this business, really. Like we struggle with the same stuff every day. It's just after a long enough period of time going through the routine every day, it's pretty amazing how you wake up one day and you're like, holy crap, we sold like a bajillion houses this month. It's pretty cool, you <laughs> well, know. And like, I think, and I think you could take a look. There's, I promise you, don't want to take the career path I took where you just fall forward sure. and fail enough to where eventually you just hack your way into like having some ability. Maybe. But, I mean, there, there's a, there, there it is, it's you, just a long, you, I will tell you because you were systematic and routine in your approach, your career took a, took a path, a much faster path towards success than mine could have ever because it was just such a slow growth process. Cause my scripting came when I failed at the table, right? Yeah. Like, that's well, I just, it, here's the thing. I just learned to mimic it with others. I learned yep. from Joshua Strong, Michael Reese, Jay Kinder. Like I learned that, all right, what, what they're, what I perceive they had and have is what I wanted. Yep, right. Sure. And I'm going to use perceive cause you don't know what's happening behind closed doors. No. Um, but can we talk, can we talk money and investments real quick? For sure. Instead of a billionaire idea. I would idea. rather only talk money and investments. But I know, but I think, I mean, we can do the only real estate investment. Podcast. Billionaire idea. <laughs> Space Jam 3. <laughs> oh, no. Do you think he can still... You think <laughs> I'm not even going to play it for you that. you think he can still dunk? <laughs> oh, I don't know. He had some roles there in those interviews. Yes, he could dunk. 100%. Yeah. He He's 6'6". Yeah, if he you can't, can't dunk and you were a former... He should be able... He might rattle, really, he might rattle his knees when he gets hey, Honestly, yeah. he should be able to dunk until he's about 90 years old. So just at his let's, go back to, let's, let's go back to money. Because um, something that, that struck me, and this is it's, it's going to sound weird how, how I say this, is um, so he earned $90 million over 15 years of playing. That's for basketball. For basketball. Yeah. For, for basketball. Um, 
Now, 63 of that 90 million came in his last two years of playing. Sure. Right? Um, how much do you think he was worth at that time? I'm going to say... Like when he retired or what? When, when he, he retired, retired from base. I'm going to say he was worth half a billion. Yeah, I was going to say 500 million. I don't think he was worth that much. We'll go back and... We go back and look. Well, and I'm you just don't guessing. have the answer? No. What the hell are we doing then? I just think... In 2014, he became a billionaire. Okay. And he became a billionaire because he bought the Charlotte Hornets in 2010 for $175 million. He became a um, billionaire because he might as well be Nike. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yes. So so uh, what I want to talk about that in 2015... He started. He was his, his. It was estimated he was making over a hundred, a uh, hundred million in, in royalties just from Nike. It's estimated he makes about one forty-five to to one fifty a year. Okay, uh, I guess I would have thought that number was a lot higher back right? in the day. Yeah. Well, so everything was Jordan Gatorade, McDonald's. So they were, yeah, remember the old, yeah. They were, but everything. they also signed him like Adidas. Like there's a Reebok offered him a million dollars to sign with them. He wanted Adidas, and Nike came in and, and basically it was two hundred fifty thousand. Is what they started him out at, right? And so I think it was a per shoe deal or something. So it was, it was said, still, yeah, a lot of those deals were probably a little earlier on. Worked out to be the best. Worked right. out to be a pretty yeah. good business choice. But here's here's what I want to talk about is is again is you know if you put yourself as an athlete in the real estate agent, you, uh, you know, if you think of yourself as an athlete in the real estate agent, you know, field, and you can earn a ton of money in this business, right? So. You could earn, you know, ninety million over fifteen years of selling real estate. Let's just say hypothetically. Sure. But how many times did people? What are people doing with that? Well, that's he, the thing is, you can always earn more than you spend. Regardless, he is now of how earning more money per year because of the royalties, which is like in our world would oh, be. I don't doubt that. Our world would be going and buying rental properties. Yes. Right. right? Going and buying cash flowing assets. Yep. Right. So, so something to really dive in on is is. Look, you can earn a lot of money in this business, but what are you doing with it? Sure. So that's the talk. I mean, I mean, again, he became a billionaire in 2014. It wasn't he wasn't a billionaire before then, right? Um, he's worth 2.1 billion estimated right now. Um, he bought the Charlotte Hornets in 2010 for 175. It's it's in 2020. It's estimated to be worth more than 1.5 billion, and he owns 97 percent of that franchise. Right, so Jeez. so when you start to factor, Owning a sports team is ridiculous. I Where know. else do you get that kind of? You buy something for one seventy five a decade ago, and it's worth a money, billion right? and like, a half. I, like I just, how you mismanage a sports team to not make money and they have to like move or something is beyond. Me. It just <laughs> it seems like they seem all ridiculous. make so much money, well, and that's the Hornets, dude. The Hornets blow. Like, what are we even <laughs> talking about here? But we're, we're, but again, you can go and buy. Um, um, you can go and buy rental properties that increase. Sure. I mean, our net worth has increased because of rental properties that we own. I mean, sure. we own 200 plus of them, yep. right? And so you start factoring that in. It's like, all right, what can you take your, your, your you know, athlete income, your real estate sales income, sure. and then what are you going to do to invest that to, to set yourself up to become the Jordan, the businessman Jordan in the future? I think that's a good segue to have AG on. Let's do it. Let's do it. I've been saying let's do it. Call him. Like now? Sure. I'll text him. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys, it's been an enjoyable show. It is officially um, Ball's Ass How to Get in Texas. Dude. So for real. And full traffic's going again. Yeah, yeah. traffic's going traffic's again. Traffic's picked back up. We have ended, we've ended everything. Was it the weather, Derek? Why did the rocket not go off? No, they had adverse weather know. in the area. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a Florida thing. It's not a Houston thing, by the way. I got to think they build rockets strong enough to just pierce right through that. Do they, if, I was just saying, if a storm or something stops your rocket from launching, I don't think you should launch I think launch it's the exact rocket. opposite. I Did, think those things really? are bad boy fragile. Yeah, you have to remember, too, like the Challenger, that, that happened because like an O-ring was frozen. Very, very that small piece That's of... true. They are like, they're, they're riding very fragile. Like mouse, <laughs> yeah. It's like a game of mousetrap. You're not being talking about the, 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 real, the real headline is, have you seen the space suits? Oh, they're dope, bro. No, they're not. <laughs> they're, oh, not are you kidding? Them. No. They, bro, they got the full frontal glass face. Full frontal glass face. Full frontal it glass looks face. cool, I think. Maybe, Do they look maybe, like um, Daft Punk? They, no, but you can see their faces. Oh, but okay. it's a similar theme. Maybe I saw a rendering or something. Yeah, I thought they looked pretty this cool. This suit looks god-awful. Are you saying the design? Or like, are you like a jersey guy that's like, those third jerseys are terrible? Like, are you more like, you don't like the helmet shape? I think it's the whole thing. He's just like nothing. He's yeah. like, I don't like it. You would think that they would be able to to make it sexier. You heard it here, folks, everybody. Nick hates America. Derek, take us out.